we are going to be doing uh, some coding, of course. <laughs> Working on glowing telegram, um, which uh, is going to continue until I'm tired of it. <laughs> until it's 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 uh, I'm happy with kind of where it's at and. Uh, at some point, we'll we'll mix in some other projects again. It's been a while since we did any other coding projects besides. Oh, can't put my phone there if I want it to be off camera. <laughs> um, do some other coding projects. Maybe go back to Daily Jewel. Maybe do some uh, Minecraft mod stuff again. Uh, at some point. Um, but you know, there's still a lot to do on this project and, uh, let's, let's get started. I think what I want to do, we talked about this <laughs> a little over a month ago, looks like three weeks ago. Uh, this, this, uh, library called Figment was suggested by someone. It might've been brainless. It might've been someone else. I forget that was like a month ago. Uh, and Figment. Uh, so let's blow this up a little bit. Probably need to do that in uh, VS Code too, because I'm doing some coding uh, uh, yesterday off stream, and uh, I wanted a little bit more screen real estate, so I did zoom out. So let me zoom back in. So things are more legible uh, for the stream. And uh, so Figment is a semi-hierarchical configuration library for Rust. Uh, so con free, it's unreal. And I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking this <laughs> like pro versus con, right? Uh, as in, there's not a lot of reasons not to use it, is what they're trying to say. So I, um, I actually have uh, some uh, start on this. Um, yeah, I think I have that pull request. Here. It's a, a commit. Okay, so here's the commit. And then we can kind of figure out what we're going to do from here. So the commit just adds figment and figment file provider adapter. So this was another crate that I found that um, provides an adapter for figment. Figment comes with um, Toml and environment variable and a couple other things. But uh, the file provider allows you to read from a file essentially um, automatically, and we have we have some warnings that I need to you know do stuff about. Can can I turn off? Can I hide the annotations? There we go. So very small thing, right? Um, but the idea is we'd have a config.rs that would define what a configuration looks like. And then right now I just wanted to, uh, my little experiment to like start learning about Figment. Uh, whatever, three weeks ago when I committed this was, okay, well, let's read the OpenAI API key, right? So it's a secret wrapping a string. Um, so a secret is this other, um, data type from react uh, redact not react redact that um, wraps a string but when you like log it or you try to like dump the contents of it uh, kind of naively you get like a redacted message instead of the actual contents which is very helpful um, when we're debugging looking at logs that sort of stuff and not wanting to leak secrets into logs. So I wanted to find out, could I make um, a thing that would load a configuration? Uh, it would specifically look for environment variables and then uh, the environment variables would represent like a file path and it would actually read the contents of the file and then put it into the, the secret. And so this seemed to work, at least it compiled. I don't have any tests or anything. But it, it seemed like this was uh, going to work. So then the the um, 
the rest of the effort here is going to be to flesh out what config looks like um, and to probably rename environment variables. The question is, do I want them all to start with app? Do I want to do something special with um, so this file adapter thing? I probably, I wonder if there's something other than prefix like suffix. That sort of, so those are the questions, right? Um, so I have a, a pull request, a draft pull request here, which has the, that commit. And uh, his very conflicting. Uh, so I think, I think it's going to be easiest to work from here. And we're going to pull down, uh, get pull origin main. Um, and so I have this set to do a rebase uh, merge. So that should be fun. Uh, so we see auto merging cargo.lock conflict, uh, merge conflict and cargo.lock, auto merging cargo.toml, merge conflict and cargo.toml. Uh, okay, so we just need to fix these merge conflicts. Um, so uh, after this uh, commit on this branch, I had updated uh, the version of validator. So what I would like to do is I'll take this out and then I will accept both changes. There we go. That's how I want to merge that. Is that the only conflict? Yes. Okay. Uh, so then we can get add uh, API cargo.toml. Then I don't know about cargo lock. I've not really looked at this. It's not really intended for manual editing. Editing. I wonder if I um, uh, cargo. What are the commands? I already forgot. <laughs> cargo uh, init add remove run test bench clean. Check. Uh, maybe just build. Or maybe update. I wonder if update handles, uh, like with npm, you know, in that ecosystem, you can do npm install. And if you have a conflict in your package lock, it'll auto fix it. Now it doesn't like that. Okay. Um, see all commands with dash dash list. wonder if there is a uh, thing that will help help us here. So add, build, bench, build, check, clean, flippy, config, doc, fetch, fix. Oh, I didn't know there was a fix. Uh, format, uh, generate lock file. Uh, package publish stock search test tree. There we go. Let's try this. Okay. Do we now have no, that did not this unless this is like stale it is all right so that did that just updated uh, locked versions so as as the the output here said it locked 301 packages to the latest compatible versions right so we have uh, versions listed in here of things and then these things have their own dependencies uh, yeah, so I updated the log file. Cool. Did that. So first of all, get add cargo.lock. Yep. So here's a question. So I updated this file 
And this cargo.lock exists. What's in this file? Stuff. <laughs> we have another one inside of task worker, right? Well, we get, maybe this file doesn't need to exist anymore. What if I delete this? Cargo build. Uh, all this uh, builds again with uh, things being updated. Almost there. Six, seven. Uh, use imports. We'll 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 you know address warnings and, and start making progress on things once. Uh, make sure that uh, these changes <laughs> are good, and we can continue the rebase merge. warnings but it's fine um so and it didn't add a new let me let me rerun the, the other command generate lock file okay so this seems good right so the the sub crates or whatever you want to call them they have cargo tomals but they don't have lock files um the lock file might have been a leftover from earlier in the project when things were different. Okay, so, get status, get rm api cargo.lock, get status. Okay, so now we'll do get rebase continue. To continue our rebase merge. Uh, okay, so this is, this is, basically rewriting the commit that I made three weeks ago um, relative to the latest commit from Maine, right? Because there was only one commit on this branch. And so we rewritten that commit. Uh, and so I don't think there's anything I need to change in that message. There we go. So we successfully rebased and updated our uh, ref for our branch. And uh, at some point, VS Code will realize that things have changed. Yeah. Refresh. Yeah. Uh, and so now it push. So if I just get push origin and the branch name, this won't work because now our histories have diverged, right? So the branch that I had um, in the GitHub repo uh, is, you know, has a commit, but I just created a completely different commit. Uh, it says the tip of your current branch is behind its remote counterpart. That's not really accurate. We have like divergent, diverging histories, now, right? So what I want to do is I want to, uh, do force. All right. So that will change my remote branch to mirror exactly what I have here, which is a commit that builds on top of the current main branch, right? So when I look here, I can see I force pushed the branch and I look at files changed and this is um, what's changed. So in this single commit, uh, in this pull request, I've removed that cargo lock that wasn't doing anything. I've updated the cargo lock at the top level um, added Figment and uh, uh, file ad provider adapter and the other stuff that was over here. Okay, so now we're in a good place to actually start working on this, I think. Uh, so, conceptually, what I want to do, we have this uh, config struct 
And then in main.rs, we have a lot of stuff related to uh, getting the application running, our API service. And um, so here, like I'm reading environment variables uh, and having default values and doing various things. And I end up putting this inside of app state. So the question is, what is, what is app state? It's just a struct, right? What I'm thinking that I want to do is I want to take all the things that are configurable parts of the app state and move them into config. And then app state will contain a config and then things like HTTP client and our, our Redis client. And then a lot of this can go away. A lot of this logic can go away. So that is where I want to go with this. Um, things also worth noting, it looks like, well, it's interesting, right? So in the case of opening a key path, um, that indicates something that we want to read the contents of the file to be able to, um, you know, get it, use the, the contents of the file itself as the as the thing that we're passing around uh, as a secret. Um, whereas in the case of like video storage path, we actually just want the path itself. We're not reading from, because this is a directory anyway, but we're not reading from anything. We just want to know what the path is. Um, so I think what's likely is that for the purposes of uh, reading secrets from file paths, we're going to want to have some kind of convention for uh, the name of the environment variable. So we're going to have to change some things uh, if I want this to work really smoothly. So one of the questions I asked a few minutes ago is what are other options? What are other things we can do here with um, this, this ENV provider prefix? Generate better metadata when available. Interesting. Interesting. So there's some docs here. Yeah, so this is a provider that sources its values from environment variables. All key lookups and comparisons are case insensitive. Environment variable values can contain structured data passed as a value with some text resembling TOML. Interesting. So you can pass like a list <laughs> in an environment variable. Okay. Okay. Uh, key paths. Because environment variable names are emitted as key paths in the provided data, a nested dictionary is created for every component of the name delimited, yeah, delimited by dot. Each parent of the next with the leaf mapping. So the environment variable named a.b.c equals three can creates the mapping a to b to c to three in the name of the data. So you can have some, some structure there. Environment names typically can, cannot typically contain the dot character. Another character can be used in its place uh, by replacing the character name with dot with this split. It's going to be this method that does exactly this. Okay. Profile. This provider does not set a profile. Metadata. This provider is named environment variables. It does not specify a source. Interpolation makes part paths uppercase limited. Data. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So we don't have a way to look for environment variables. Um, maybe we don't do prefix then. Maybe we don't do prefix. Well, I want to for the file adapter, right? So what, what does the docs on the file adapter or file provider adapter say? 
provider suffix. Oh, here we go. And relative DIR. Um, so maybe I get rid of Prefixed. There was also a raw method. A raw just is, is new. Yeah. So I might do something like uh, this. Right, so we'll just take all the environment variables uh, and then we want to do some other things here. So wrap, okay, the suffix it looks for is underscore file. Um, I don't suppose there's something we can do where we can provide. Uh, the suffix uh, with suffix. Relative to the directory. Provides a relative directory to be applied to paths when finding these files from which to read values. We're not going to do that um, because the idea is going to be that the. Um, because this is running inside of Docker, the path is going to be an absolute path to like a volume mounted on the Docker container. It's going to point to where the secret is. So it wouldn't be relative to anything. Uh, let's see. Only restrict the provider to process only the given list of keys and their underscore file counterparts. something before for changing the suffix with suffix here we go so you you wrap your uh whatever env is your source of values and then on the results of wrap you call with suffix so right there with suffix and we're going to come up with a new convention. Um, it's going to be so not underscore path because we have that used in various places. So um, something like that. Now oh, we're missing a dot to start with. There we go. Okay, so that's going to make it so that we can have, hmm. So this would be the environment variable. Yeah, there we go. Copilot wrote, wrote the explanation for me. So that that's the, actually the name of the environment variable that this will read, right? It's gonna look for open AI key uh, underscore secret. Set the suffix a secret, and it will read that. And uh, it seems like uh, it will support putting it inside of the secret string. So that's good. Um, so. But this is not enough, right? So this gets us the ability to read files. We also want to merge in uh, Here's a question. Do we I'm assuming that we need to do both of these things. 
right? So let's take a look at the docs here. So build it, build from a Figma provider. Uh huh. Let's see. Extract. this so it seems that we don't need to like add another separate environment variable provider thingy here so I guess I won't and it knows we don't use this okay and for now I'm gonna remove these and we could support like having a toml configuration file and these other things but we don't really need that for what we're doing right now. Everything is being passed in as environment variables. Uh, so the next logical thing to do is going to be to take the rest of these values and get them in here. Um, and what we're gonna be after is, so we know that for instance, this is gonna be, <laughs> Um, hmm. How do I feel about that? Actually, can we can we go back to the docs and look at this? So app bar file, and then the value is just called. Um, okay, so underscore secret does, <laughs> hmm, it looks a little weird, uh, but it does get the job done. I don't know that I have a better idea. Like I could change the suffix to be different, you know, so it could be like, um, I guess it could be path. The issue is that if the environment variable ends in underscore path, is it going to? Okay, let's let's try this. And if I'm going to do that, I can just remove this because that's the default, and, and it's going to be path. I think this might work. It might be smart enough to see that, um, you know, unless we're, unless we provide an environment variable called rendered episode storage path path, I think this might just be the, this might end up just being the contents of the environment variable and not trying to read a file from the location of it. We'll see. Um, I'm not going to add comments for every single one. I just the ones that are going to be read from uh, from files, which are these secrets. I don't think anything else is read from a file. Everything else is passed in as just normal environment variables that have the contents of what needs to be put there. Um, and this is just complaining because, of course, we are not actually reading these values anymore, but we will soon. So I think instead of trying to do some, like, I'm just going to move forward with writing the code to use this and break things like so. And uh, we'll just go with it. So uh, that means all of this code, I think, goes away. names do match the environment variables um, yeah. so something like this uh, well, that's 
that's fine. That's not what I want to do at all. I want to call config load config. Uh, which takes no arguments. I don't think I can. Um, I don't think I can do that. So load config. Uh, yeah, let's import. Great. Then all of this stuff goes away as well. Is there any kind of special validation that I have going on here? We're just trying to parse it into the right type, right? So I think all of this can go away. Um, so here's here's something. Uh, Redis URL is, is something else that should be in config. Like so. Uh, and what else? Get rid of these other things here. Uh, Twitch client stuff and secret. All of that goes away. All of this goes away. Yeah. Um, just Redis URL. Ooh. Um, there was a separate ticket for this. I might as well do this now. So we'll do hub. Um, HTTP client agent. There you go. That's something I wanted to have configurable rather than hard coded. Uh, so all of these things. Right down config config. Uh, oh, uh, right. So config doesn't implement, uh, doesn't derive. Well, debug or clone. We do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So we can have config inside of our app state that derives clone and debug. Uh, yeah, it's not happy with this because this is a constructor. Uh, I, I guess is what you would call something that's called new. <laughs> that is the thing that creates uh, a, a struct like this. Maybe there is a more rusty name for that. Um, but it can't return result or option, so we can't do that. Um, I guess we just have to panic if this fails. There we go. Better to panic here. I mean, the other option would be to pass the config into the app state. That might make, actually make more sense. Um, like this. That's nice. Uh, and then params is passed in config that Redis URL as SDR. Okay, so that is what app state looks like, theoretically. Um, move occurs because config has type config config, which does not implement the copy trait. I think we can't just do this, right? Can we? No. Um, this field doesn't implement copy. Right, so uh, secret. So we can't go that route. At least I don't know how to <laughs> proceed from there. Uh, I do know that this is wrong. So here's here's something that I should figure out. How do we set defaults in the config? Um, I'll say, I'm 
big merge, join, extract. Uh, let's go back to, let's go find the figment docs. Remember I linked to those, there we go. Is there a way to provide, I mean, I could just create um, a toml file or something and then load that in and that would be the defaults. That's, that's an option. Documentation. So we have an example here where we read from a TOML file, where we look for environment variables, where we also look for specific environment variables and bring them in. And then uh, read a cargo.json file. Metadata. Okay. Extracting in profiles. Hmm. Aha, impl default for config, so we can provide defaults. Figment from serialized defaults. Big default. Huh, okay. So here we're using figment new, but if I wanted to do something like this, then uh, the things that I want to provide as defaults are for OpenAI model, like so, uh, and that's it. <laughs> I guess, I guess that's the only thing I want to provide a default for. Um, hmm, then that doesn't really work, does it? have to provide every single Ooh. I can't do something like this can I I uh, want too many dots how many dots do I need can I do that <laughs> or does is this recursive uh, cannot return without recursing This ends up invoking this again, doesn't it? Hmm. There's not like a super. That doesn't that doesn't do the thing that I uh, <laughs> want to do. That refers to uh, the parent crate. Uh, that's too bad. I guess I will not have defaults, and it will just have to work. That means uh, one bit of functionality that we have right now where we will support, you know, you don't have to provide the environment variable, no longer is the case. All right, so this goes away. And we're gonna create uh, let config equals that. We pass in the config. And otherwise this should be mostly the same except some of the environment variables are gonna have to be renamed. Uh, big. All right, and so we're back to this. So can I can I just pass in this? Yes. Because open to oh no, it's a lie. <laughs> uh, T uh, implements into connection info. Uh, this trait, and 
that's implemented for um, a string slice. It is implemented for a connection info. It is implemented for a tuple of uh, something that can be converted into a string and uh, a uh, uh, so this is like a, a host name and port for string. Okay. So why doesn't this work? Because this is still a move. Big has type, which does not implement the copy trait. Can we just clone this? Does that make it happy? Yes. All right. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> what does it mean? What is that telling me? Like these strings are, are um, you can fade value borrowed here after move right so we read uh, what if I don't suppose this changes anything Maybe this is gonna work, so we'll do this. And um that. I really want defaults though. Here's a question. Can I do dot merge? What are my options here? Is it join? Yeah, and then I can just provide um tuples. New join string original spec item one. Okay, so can I? Yeah, H two T P. Not that. This. that if I wanted to provide other providers. Uh, which would be the other thing that I wanted to have as the default. If I can, if I can do it. G P T four O. Um that reminds me, there was a new blog post from OpenAI. Uh, that I need to go reread. That had some features uh, that we should leverage at some point. Uh, 
let's let's the the default here can be glowing telegram API. All right, so uh, what do we got going on here? All right, so now <laughs> we've broken everything, right? Everything that was reading from App State to get a hold of these config values is now broken. Uh, so we got to fix that. Let me let me go look at my docs here uh, on Figment. Merging and joining our eager sources are read immediately. It's useful to find the function that returns a figment. The util module contains helpful serialized and serialized format, magic values, jail error, surrey flattened, can break error attribution, so it's best to avoid it. So this config uh, struct. All right, this is this is our struct that we've defined, right? So nothing mag magic happening there. We defined the struct, and now we're passing it around instead of app state. So now, um, I think before I get into this, let me fix the environment variables in Docker Compose. Right. So in config.rs, we said that. Uh, oh. Right, because of the way I ended up doing things, I think this is this hasn't changed, right? So it's opening a key path is the path to the file that contains the key. Um, so should be good. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so I think. That gets us to the point where we have our configuration nicely abstracted away into this struct. Uh, and we can pass it around. Now we just gotta fix everything. <laughs> uh, and I think this this could almost be as simple as appstate.config.stuff. I do worry that we're gonna have kind of borrow issues so far so good what if I replaced everywhere where it's app state dot with app state dot config that would almost hold on I mean that's gonna break other things but I think less things that are currently broken so in star rs files I'm gonna replace uh, app state dot with appstate.config. Anyway, let's see. Ah, so that's the only place where I'm referring to it as app state. Other places, I'm, I'm guessing everywhere else I'm referring to it as state. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, in star.rs files, dot big dot. So 
here, we're referring to the to this. We don't want to change this. We don't want to change. Uh, it is state.redis, not state.config.redis. Uh, so we don't want to change those. I change that. I don't want to change that. Or that, that, so nothing that is referring to HTTP client or Redis. Although I think that uh, app state Redis member should probably be called Redis client for clarity. I might go back and do that at some point. Just need to remember. Uh, so yeah, all of these things. Can we can we replace in all of the? Okay, I'll just click, 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 click. All right. Now, still some issues. No field config. Okay, so we double changed it here and here and here. Hopefully. That's it. Uh, Clippy's running, so we'll see what it says. So, well, some warnings, but they were there before. Um, cool. So. Actually, a fairly small number of changes. Right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's that's more like it. Like surely some of the handlers are referring to those config values. Definitely yes. So like in silence detection, we read state.config.noise and state.config.duration. These probably need better names. <laughs> but uh yeah. Sure. Uh so if we go to this file, let me let me commit this. Let's see. Uh, not even close. Um, what did we do here, right? So we um, moved app config to some nonsense. To... Okay, gotta be careful now hitting escape. It likes to clear this field. Uh, moved app config to config struct. And updated all references. That's basically it. Okay. Now that that's committed, I want to. Um, oh, sorry, not in config. In state. Um, rename this to Redis client for clarity. It's hard to believe it's been almost an hour. So, so that updated all the things, very convenient. Uh, renamed uh, Redis to Redis client um, in app. All right. And um, I guess what I'll do is I will uh, get this built. And uh, after the break, <laughs> we'll see if that uh, still works. Really makes me wish I had like some, some proper like end-to-end uh, -end testing automated for this thing. But uh, who's got time for that? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to top up my water and uh, take a, a walk around the house. And, uh, when I return, uh, we'll wrap this up and uh, look for the next thing to work on. 
probably some OAuth code refactoring is kind of the next list, uh, next thing in the list since, uh, oops, I already did this one. Uh, help me, it's over here. I'm just feeling a little, a little laggy right now. It's unfortunate, build process. All right, I'll be back in just a couple minutes and we'll get back to coding. Here we It doesn't know that, right? But we're, we're building a condition to include instead of a work clause. So we just wanna do this because we don't care. If it's null, then it won't equal series ID value. So it's not gonna matter. 